God's glory just a little bit more. you to shake yourself loose on this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, I want you to go to somebody that you didn't come in the building with on this morning. Begin to tell them, I'm glad to see you on today. Come on, I'm glad to see you on today. Tell them that something big is getting ready to happen. Come on, somebody. We got to get this atmosphere potent for what God is getting ready to say. Tell them something big is getting ready to happen. Come on, let them begin not look happy. Go to somebody else. Begin to tell them that something big is getting Been with 
with you. I want you to turn to your neighbor one more time and tell them something big is getting ready to happen. Something big is getting ready to happen. Uh, they, they don't look convinced. Tell somebody else. Something big is getting ready to happen. I know when you came into this year, it's been a little shaky. Come on, somebody. Come on. You, 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 some, some of you got going for a loop. Hallelujah. But God wants to remind you that he is still good on his word. That everything that he has spoken is going to come to pass. My God. Everything that he has decreed about your life, it is getting ready to happen. I believe it. Hallelujah. When you look at when you look at your month of the end of December of 2022, up until now, Hallelujah, God has initiated Hallelujah many of you into uh, as one of His candidates for a blessing. Hallelujah, He's, uh, He has initiated you. Come on, somebody, as a candidate, Hallelujah, for that next big thing. Well, what prophets, how do you know I got initiated? Well, look around your life and see what begins to break loose. Look around your life at certain calamities that begin to happen. Things that you have not foreseen or perceived coming to begin to hit you. God said that was the process of me initiating you into a process of something big is getting ready to happen. Sometimes the enemy gets aware of what God is getting ready to do. And what he does is he tries to go before God like an accuser of the brethren to tell God why you don't deserve what he's getting ready to do. But God said, yes, they do because I can trust them with this process. I can trust them with what they're going through. I can trust them. If I allow them to go through the fire, they're going to come out in spirit yes, mode. Yes. Yep. So don't be dismayed of what you're going through. Don't be dismayed if your money looking funny. Don't be dismayed if it just seems like certain doors are closing. God said, it's an initiation, baby. You're getting ready to walk into something big that you have not even perceived, my God. Hallelujah. Something big is getting ready to happen. You, are, you have been initiated as a candidate for his blessing. This is why we cannot get caught up with what we're going through. We can't get caught up with what we see. Come on, we can't get caught up with our feelings and, and how it feels. It, it, it hurts. Or it just seems like, my God, one thing after another. Can I submit to you? These are just tests, as one of God, that God wants to see. Let me see if she can hold her emotions while I am allowing this to happen. Let me see how she responds while I allow things to happen. Your emotion is like a litmus test in the spirit. And God is trying to, hallelujah, balance our emotions because what you don't understand is when we respond in a negative emotion it gives the enemy legal rights to move in. It gives the enemy legal rights to move in and to prove to God this is why they don't deserve what you're getting ready to do. But this is why you got to pass the test. You can't allow what you're going through to shift your perspective about God. You can't allow what you're going through, my God, to make you doubt God as if what God has spoken won't come to pass. Uh -huh. That's the come on. test. Pass the test. You gotta pass the test. Yes, yes. Turn to your neighbor again and tell them something big is getting ready to happen. Something big. Oh God, oh God, come on. Tell it to somebody else that something big is getting ready to happen. I want you to tell your neighbor, I won't be before you too long. I want you to uh, say, I'm in transition. I'm in transition. Tell them it's transition time. It's transition time. Uh, they don't look convinced, my God. Tell somebody else, it's transition, it's transition time. The anthology the of the word transition, which is a Latin word, it means a going across or over. The root word of transition, which means to transire, hallelujah, which is often referred to a process, not the end of a result, but it is a process. Many of us are in transition right now. God is moving you from one phase to the next in your life. The Bible reference transition hallelujah when god gave me the the, the the download of what transition was he said i want you to take a look at the life of joshua 
I want you to reference Joshua to my people because if, if many of you who ever received the Bible, who ever read the Bible, the book of Joshua, you've seen the different transitions that took place within that story. But God told me to tell you, tell them to get ready because they're about to experience a Joshua encounter. What am I talking about? A Joshua encounter. That means that you're going to go from one place to the next. He's taking you from one place to the next. But you got to be ready. You got to be ready. For that something big. Joshua, the name of Joshua means God is my salvation. Yes, yes. It is a Hebrew word, hallelujah, from a Greek laso, which meaning God is my salvation, which is pronounced Joshua. I'm probably not saying, I'm probably jacking it up for the Bible scholars in here. But it's pronounced Joshua in the Bible. He was the successor of Moses. If y'all yeah, did a, a study about him, he was the one that was next in line to help the children of Israel cross over after Moses passed. He was the appointed one. But do you know, hallelujah, sometimes in transition, things can be a little uncertain. Things can be a little uneasy. Things can be a little confusing. But you cannot be caught up with what is going on around you can't be caught up on the noise because if Joshua was caught up with oh my God my leader is getting ready to be taken up and that oh my God that I'm next in line he would have missed the hand of God he would have missed what God is doing this is why you got to stay focused turn to somebody else and say I'm in transition something big is getting ready to happen I don't look like it's somebody else. Something big is getting ready to happen. Something big is getting ready to happen. So the, the foundational scripture, hallelujah, um, is I want to get to you is Joshua chapter 3, verse 5. Joshua chapter 3, verse 5. Because we're talking about we're in transition, Pastor, and that something big is getting ready to happen. But can I submit to you before the something big happens, you got to prepare yourself for that something big. Hallelujah. You got to make sure that you are in position to receive that something big. Come on, we, we ain't got time to miss our season. Hallelujah. You, you don't have time, um, Carlos. and how he was newly appointed a leader, leading people who was more acquainted with Moses, and he is a newly appointed leader with uncertainties. Okay, God, what is getting ready to happen? I know you made some promises that we're about to enter somewhere, but God had to tell them, tell the people to prepare themselves for what I'm getting ready to do. Everybody got Joshua chapter 3 verse 5? You're there? Okay, it says, then Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourself. For his purpose. Yes. For tomorrow the Lord will do wondrous miracles among you. Come on, somebody. I need you to turn to your neighbor because we're talking about your in transition that you got to prepare yourself. Tell them it is time to sanctify yourself. Come on, somebody. Turn and tell somebody else. Um, um, Caleb, it is time to sanctify yourself. Sanctify yourself. We're talking about we're in transition. The word that I want you to hone in on that scripture, hallelujah, is sanctify. The word sanctify means to be set apart. The word sanctify means to be consecrated. Come on, because the children of Israel was getting ready to move into a territory that they have not seen before. But can I submit to you that God cannot let you into the promise at the dimension or level that you are in right now. Can I submit to you there is a version of you that qualifies you to walk into your next. Because sometimes we're asking God to do some things, Maria, but the version of us that is required to walk into that next has not come. But God said, tell my people to sanctify themselves. Tell my people to consecrate themselves for what they've been praying for. Tell my people to get their mind together. Get their emotions in order for what I'm getting ready to do. You've been praying for Goshen and God said Goshen is here. You've been praying for God to open the door and he said it is here. But God said, you got to sanctify yourself. you got to yourself. You've got to be separated, says the Lord. If you want to walk into this next thing, if you want to walk into this next blessing, yes. Pastor, there is another version of you that has to emerge I agree. for that dimension. Yeah, help us, Lord. Help us, There's a version of you that
for more finances, but you're not a good steward. You've been praying for God to open doors out of our shake for your business, but you have not written the business plan. God said, prepare yourself. Come on, somebody, consecrate yourself for what I'm getting ready to do in your life. You gotta prepare. Come on, some of us get lost in transition. Just because you are in transition, God has not commanded you to stay there. When God puts you in a of transition it is to unravel the old you so that the new you can emerge it is to unravel the old mindset so that this mind which was also in Christ Jesus can be within yourself my, my. come on you're in transition turn to your neighbor and say something big something is getting big. ready to happen do you believe that something big is getting ready to happen. My God. So they had to sanctify themselves for this next season, Maria. They could not walk into the promise of God with the same old mindset, Pastor. They could not walk into the promises of God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. With the same condition in their spirit. This is why sometimes God will pull us alone with himself. He'll separate us for a season because there's something within you that he is doing and he can't afford an official for it to be tainted so he gotta separate you for a season. He gotta consecrate you for a season. So when it's your time to emerge they don't see the old version of you. They see God when you open up your mouth. When it's time for you to emerge, you ain't thinking with the same mindset but you got the mind of Christ on the inside of you. When it is time but focus. God is getting ready to do something big. Come on somebody. He loves attention. Don't focus on yes. myself. Let him do his thing. But God is getting ready to do something big. Uh, you, 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 Like I said, you, we're getting ready to cross over. I want you to think about the things that you, you know your, your secret kryptonite. You know what your kryptonite is. Come on. You, you, you know that thing that, that trips you up that becomes a, a weight. Come on. You know that thing that you fall in and make you cuss every now and then. You know that thing that make you want to drop it like it's hot every now and then. You know that thing that make you want to get drunk every now and then. God said to set them. Come on, consecrate yourself. Because you can't go in the new season with those habits. You can't go in that next place, my God, with those things. He said, come on, somebody. Something big is getting ready to happen. But I need the new version of you to emerge. Come on, somebody. The old Come on, we're, yeah. we're talking about that we are in transition. Remember when y'all first came into the church, you guys were in transition. You had to do what? You had to get certain things in order for the house to come. Then the house came. Then when you got the house, then you had to get certain things in order. Then the baby came. You see how God, how when God begins to open hey, certain hey. doors, it's a process. He didn't give you the baby before yeah, the house. He gave you the house first. Before the baby, so when the baby came, the hallelujah. Amen. You get what I'm saying? So when, when the baby came, the baby had a house to dwell in. This thing was a process. Come on, somebody. You had to prepare yourself for what you were believing God for. So what you're asking God for is looking for you, but you gotta consecrate yourself. You gotta ready yourself, woman of God, for what you've been praying for. We can't tell God we want to expand our business when you know you ain't got the what you're praying for. You gotta prepare yourself. Yeah. Come on, we ask God to enlarge our codes. Come on. We tell God enlarge our codes. It's expand our borders. Expand our stake. But do you got the mind? My God. Do you got the spirit to handle the weight that comes with this thing? Hallelujah. Do you have the mind to handle the weight that come 
with this thing. Let me come tell you something. Now. I remember when I was praying for my husband to come into my life. I remember when I was believing God. I was single. Amen. Praise the Lord. I used to be around the fish her husband a lot. I ain't had no man. Amen. I was praying and waiting for God to send me my man. Amen. She was helping me pray. But uh, <laughs> what I've been praying for was looking for me, but was I ready? I ain't gonna tell you. The first year was a little whoo, was a little off the chain. Because what I thought I was ready for, I realized that the capacity that it takes to carry a weight of marriage requires a new version. Come on. The first couple of months, I went in there thinking I was still a fiance. Now, baby, hello, somebody wants a marriage phase. Like, you are a wife now. So with wife duties come a whole nother responsibility. It's one thing when you're in your dating phase and there's another thing when you're in your engagement phase. But when you're married in the marriage phase, it requires a whole new version of you. So the question is, what you're praying for, do you feel that you got the capacity to carry this thing? And if you don't, it's okay to be honest with God. Say, God, I know I've been praying for this. Come on, he already know. He want to see if you know where you at. Come on, somebody. He want to make sure you know where you at. He knows where we at. He know what we can handle. He know what we can't handle. Something's got to let you learn along the way. And something you got to become another version before I release it into your hands. Yeah. There's another version of you that I need to see before I open that door. I remember when I was 23, 24, I got married at 33. But when I was 23, 24, Pastor, I was telling God I want to be married. I want to be married. I want to be married. Be married. Everybody around me was getting married, getting married, getting married. Get married. I want to be married. I want to be married. married. God said, no, 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 no. You want to know why God told me no? Because if God hadn't released a husband when I put Pastor, I would have turned him into a God. He would have become my God. You want to know why? Because my heart of casting was not all the way in God. Come on, somebody. I wanted to get married to have sex. Can I be honest? Hallelujah. That was the only legal way that you could have sex. So I wanted to get married at 24 so I can do it the legal way. But God said no. No, 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 no. Come on, my purpose in you is greater because I'm such a good, good father. I'm not going to release it because you're not ready. Because I'm such a good, good father. Hallelujah. i got to process you some more for what you've been praying for. So when I got to the place that I became, became about my father's business, everything I prayed for began to align. Remember I said in the midst of your transition, this is where God prepares you to ready yourself for what you've been praying for. This is why, Pastor, we can't waste a transition. You can't waste your transition moment. Come on, somebody. The things that you're supposed to learn when you're in transition. Are you learning in Ezekiel? Come on, the lessons that you're supposed to learn. Come on, Pastor, while we're in transition, are we learning this thing? Because the lessons help you sustain the blessing. Let me say that again. The lessons help you sustain the blessings. We're in transition. We're crossing over. So let me give you a couple of keys, things that you got to get rid of. Come on, somebody. As you're, tra as you're crossing over. The first thing is fear. Fear. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It's the New King James Version. It says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Sometimes we're afraid of the unknown. When we, when we can't control a matter, Carlos, we're, we're, we're fearful of the unknown. Can you imagine, Pastor, if Joshua um, was engulfed in fear? He would not have been able to lead the children of Israel to cross over. Hallelujah. Could, could you imagine that? Amen. Pastor said, I got five minutes. Glory to God. And I'm not even halfway done yet. Amen. So the next thing that you got to get rid of is doubt. Everybody say doubt. doubt. Hallelujah. Doubt. Um, Matthew chapter 14, 28 says, the, if the Lord if is you. This is Peter now. Come on. We're talking about getting rid of doubt. I want you to ponder on Peter. He said, Lord, if this is you, he replied, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. So then Peter came down out of the boat, walked onto the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, come on somebody, uh -huh. he became afraid. And then he began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and called him and said, oh, you little faith. He said, why did you doubt? 
Some of us, when we're in our transition moments because we, our hands does not have full control and, and we see a little bit of wind, come on, we see a little bit of shaking, we begin to get scared. Why are you down? Because if God brought you this far, he's not going to leave you in that situation to sink. So come on, we got to use the things that God brought us out in time past as a reference. That if God brought me in this situation, surely he's going to take me out. We're in transition. While you're in transition, you've got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Had Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, mom, he would have walked all the way to Jesus on water. He did not realize he was walking on water because his eyes was fixed on Jesus. And that is the problem with some of us. We pray for, we pray for the impossible. We ask God for the impossible. And the minute he begins to require you to do some things that seem impossible, hallelujah, you take your eyes off Jesus. Oh God, this seems a little too, too heavy. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know. Are you sure? You calling me. And all of a sudden you 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 begin to rag well. But what is hindering? What, what hindering? What's hindering you? Come on, you ran well. Who, who bewitched you? Get that doubt out of your mind. That is not of God. Doubt is not of God. That's from the kingdom of hell. Doubt comes to get your eyes off of Jesus yeah. so you can focus on Help the water Lord. that surrounds you. But do you know you were built to walk on water? You were built to do the impossible. Yeah. This is why I said God initiated you into a process, come on, to show you that something big is getting ready to happen. And that big thing that's getting ready to happen in your life, Lord of God, hallelujah, it's going to require you to walk on water. Come on, somebody. Hey. It's going to require you to fix hey. your eyes on Jesus. Yeah. It's going to require you to have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. It's going to require you to lean on God because you understand that it is not by might, it is not by power, but it is by His Spirit. Come on, somebody. God would never release a thing to you if He knew oh. you could do it on your own accord. Yes. Can you? Can I? Keep, let me say that again. He would never release something to you that He know that you can handle without Him. If this is a oh. He's going to make sure that you need him every step of the way. Come on. Come on. Something big is getting ready to happen. We can't afford to doubt God in the midst of transitioning. We got to keep our eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. We got to keep our focus on God. I'm going to just give you two more keys and I'm going to get out of the way, Pastor. Hallelujah. These are the two things that I believe that you should keep, hallelujah, within your person while we're doing the transitioning. Amen. The first key I want to say is, hallelujah, you got to make sure the presence of God has gone before you. You gotta make sure that the presence of God has gone before you. Come on. Because if this something big is getting ready to happen, we know we can't do it on our own. We know we need the presence of God. So I went ahead of myself. So number one, the first thing you have to do is perceive where you're going. Tell your neighbor, perceive where you're going. Perceive where you're going. Joshua chapter 3, verse 3 says, And after three days, the officers went to the camp and commanded the people, When you see the Ark of the Covenant, the word that I want you to hold in is see. The word see, hallelujah, in the Hebrew translation when we break it down, the word see means advisor. It means to appear. It means appear, approve, became aware, became visible. Come on, somebody. When we see the presence of God, hallelujah. Because one thing about it, when I was reading the book of Joshua, that's something that struck out of me when God said, I had to go before them before they could cross. This is why when the people got ready after they consecrated themselves, after they prepared themselves, they had to allow God to go ahead of them. God had to go ahead of them first, and then they followed. And when the Ark of the Covenant touched the water, what happened? The Jordan split. Let me tell you something. Whatever it is that you're believing for, it may seem like a joyous situation. But once the presence of God goes before you, it has no yeah. choice but to give way. Yeah. This yeah. is why we got to consecrate ourselves. This is why we got to make sure the presence of God goes before us at all times. And the last key I want to give you, hallelujah. Which I said it before, was to make sure... That you perceive. You see what he's doing and make sure his presence is going before you. Amen. I'm done because I know we run out of time. I'm going to stop right here. But we'll, let's go ahead and um, stand up on our feet. I'm done. Amen. Glory.
Glory to God. Glory to God. Okay. Amen. Glory to God. So I'm going to go ahead and do a corporate prayer. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We did tell y'all that this was going to be fast. Amen. Y'all got your whole day ahead. You glory to God. Amen. Do anybody have a prayer request? You need prayer. The altar is open. Glory to God. Oh, we'll make our prayer declarations. So if anybody would like to pray, come, we pray the altar is open. If there's something that you need us to touch and agree with, something you're believing God for, something you've been petitioning God for, the altar is open. Give y'all a couple of seconds if there's anything that you need us to touch and agree with. The Bible says we're one or two together. Touch and agree. Come on. It happens. One can put a thousand to flight. Two can put ten. Can you imagine corporately how much we can put to flight what you're asking God for? So the altar is open. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, Pastor Matt, if you can take the baby. Mom, can you minister to her, please? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Come on. I know he's sticking like two. Just pull him on. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> you just said that a little bit, Pastor Francis is going to minister to you. Anybody else need prayer? Amen. Glory to God. All right, while the administration is going forth, you guys can just begin to close your eyes and center yourself. Don't focus on me. Amen. Holy Ghost God. Begin to center yourself and focus. Center yourself. And I want you to bring to your forefront what you've been asking God for. Amen. Father God, that we're not getting lost in transition, but we're consecrating ourselves. We're getting ourselves ready for the blessing. We thank you for that big thing that's getting ready to happen. We're going to thank God. Come on, somebody. We're going to thank God. We're going to thank God for what you've been believing for. We're going to thank God for what you've been praying for. We're going to thank Him now. We're going to tell Him thank you. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, God. 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 Come on, Thank you for blessing our finances. Hallelujah. Come on, financially. God said, I'm getting ready to release that money. He's releasing that money for the vision. Come on, he's releasing the money. It's coming, it's coming. I know you heard the door is coming, though. It's coming because you position yourself to receive it. The reason why God could not have released it because you weren't ready for it. But God said, now is the time. Now is the time. I'm releasing the money. I'm releasing the finances. God said, I'm healing God. Hallelujah. I'm removing sicknesses. I'm removing the words. Hallelujah. That easily for second God said I'm renewing the way I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Hallelujah. It will not be many days from hence from now. He said, Watch my hand, watch my hand. I'm getting ready to do it. Something big is getting ready to happen. 
Hallelujah. That's something big is that healing breakthrough you've been praying for. That's something big is that finances you've been praying for. That's something big is that for, that, for that business breakthrough you've been praying for. God said, I'm getting ready to do it. Hallelujah. 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 God, I thank you in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just keep looking at you, Maria, and I just, just keep thinking of hearing God say, Be fruitful for a multiply. Be fruitful for a multiply. Wear that as on. Be fruitful for a multiply. He said, Be fruitful for a multiply. It's your season. Be fruitful for a multiply. Be fruitful for a multiply. Hallelujah. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Something big is getting ready to happen. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all, it's gonna run y'all down. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Child, something big is getting ready to happen. God said your labor has not been in vain because you are, you know, you do so much for the community. God said he's getting ready to bless you like never before. He's getting ready to bless you. Hallelujah. He's going to bless you like never before. Favor, the spouse that you want, the business that you want, God is getting ready to release it to you. He's getting ready to send it your way. Give God glory. Because you have a heart to serve my people, says the Lord. He said, I'm going to release what you've been praying for, what you've been asking for, and I'm going to do it on double because you have the heart to serve. God said, I'm going to make sure that I take care of your house. Says the Lord. He's yes. going to make sure that you're taken care of. Hallelujah. Yes. He's going to make sure that your daughters are taken care of. You don't have to worry about your daughters. Trust me, your daughters are going to get everything that they need. Your daughters are going to get everything that they need. You don't have to worry about it. He said, give it unto me. Hallelujah. He said, I am a father to the fatherless and I'm a mother to the mothers. This is going to tell you something. God is going to raise your daughters in the ways of the Lord. God is going to raise your daughters in the ways of the Lord. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. God, I thank you in the name of Jesus for what you're doing. God, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Come on, y'all. Tell God, thank you. Something big is getting ready to happen. Something big is getting ready to happen. Something big is getting ready to happen. We're going to make one more petition. The altar is open. If you need prayer, one more petition. The prophet is still up here praying. One more petition. If you need prayer, don't hold back. Amen. All right, we're going to hand it over to Pastor. Amen. At this time, we're going to get ready for our time of giving. Uh, listen, I don't mind talking about money. I like money. I don't love it, but I like it. Right? It enables us to do what we need to do. Y'all know Pastor Matt by now. God don't need your money, so we don't run no games. But we do need your money so that we can do what God has called us to do. In fact, there are certain things, as I mentioned before, and I'll keep mentioning this. There are certain things biblically that only your giving can do for you. There's no prayer, not no prophecy. Giving. God loves a cheerful giver. Cheerful. Cheerful. So these are the ways that you can give those that are watching on Facebook. Uh, you can click on the link in the caption of the video. It will take you to our website and give you the ways that you can give. You can give by way of Cash App. It's dollar sign House of Love FAO. Dollar sign House of Love FAO. And I challenge you, whatever you're thinking about giving, give some more over that. Challenge yourself. Stop giving comfortably. Now, I ain't that path to tell you give your bill money. That ain't what I'm saying. But challenge yourself in the way of giving. So whatever you're thinking about giving, give over. PayPal is houseoflovefl at yahoo.com. So if you have PayPal, you can sow that way. Houseoflovefl at yahoo.com. And then also Zelle. If you don't have PayPal or Cash App, you can use Zelle. The phone number is 954 Six zero five zero nine six five. So those that are here, sow your seed. Those that are watching again on Facebook, click on the link in the caption of the video. It will take you to our website, and again, it will lead you into the ways of giving. But you should be able to see these ways as well. 
Listen, we, we, we do this often when we come, you know, offering time. Act like we're about to pull the slot machine. Come on, put your hand up in the... Y'all seen the slot machine before. Say money. Money. Coming. Coming. To me. To me. Now. Now. Money. Money. Coming. Coming. To me. To me. Now. Now. Y'all say stewardship. Stewardship. Coming. Coming. To me. To me. Now. Now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Listen, thank you all beautiful faces for coming for our, our third family and friends. Uh, celebration. We have treats for your brother Ezekiel. Distribute those treats out. Listen, I'm old school, so eat your lunch first before you eat the candies. <laughs> but we thank you all. Listen, if you don't have a church home, uh, House of Love is always open for you. Those that are watching on Facebook, House of Love is here not to control, but to just walk alongside of you yes, uh, as a support system. Right, and if you have cash, you can come put. We, we take your cash too, but I know most people give electronically. We have service at nine o'clock on Sundays properly, and we usually done between ten fifteen and ten twenty. That's a blessing because we, listen, we're not having black church keep you until ten o'clock tonight, right? And then on Tuesdays we have Bible study. Somebody say seven fifteen. We have a wonderful time again. We keep you for seventy five minutes, and we're out. Uh, but if you are looking for a church home or just a place to be fed and loved on for a season, please, we're uh, that spot you want to that you want to connect with. Look at somebody say, I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you. Look at somebody else say, thank you for coming. 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 Listen, I hope this won't be the last time that we see you all. Thank you. May the peace of God, may the blessings of God be upon each and every one of you. Listen, as I always say. The word that went forth on today, you have to put some feet to it. Yes. Be doers of the word, not yes. hearers yes. only. But I'm praying that God, a special door will open starting this week. And that that door will swing open the rest of the doors for your benefit. As God blesses you, don't forget God. Amen. Don't make the blessing that he gives you God. But when you keep them in this proper place, that's what causes the trickle down. Real quick, if there's anyone that don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, those that are watching virtually, you're going to come back to watch the video. Those that may be in here don't want to take for granted familiar faces that mean you got Jesus. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, you can simply repeat after me. In fact, let's all repeat it, even if you're a Christian. Say, Lord. Lord. We ask, for your we ask for your forgiveness because you tell us in your word that if we confess our sins, you're faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I receive you as Lord. I receive you as my Savior. I believe you were raised from the dead on the third day. By that confession, I receive salvation this day. In Jesus' name. Listen, if you've welcomed Christ into your heart for the first time, welcome to the family of believers. If you've prayed that prayer as a sign of rededication, welcome back to the family of believers. But listen, we love you all, Facebook family and those that are here. Again, we would love for you to come out of fellowship with us. Again, Sundays at 9 o'clock and Tuesdays at 7.15. May the sweet presence of the Lord rest, rule, and abide upon each and every one of you all's households in Jesus' name. Go in peace, my father's children. Amen. Amen.